wasted your time. Welcome to today's live stream. We are going to discuss cooling your reef tank. And what we're trying to do is find different methods that work that saves you money. In the case of me, I always use cooling fans. So I've got a couple here. Um, this is the ice cap smart fan. And it is a um, fan that works great around salt water. This is the smaller version. And this is the uh, three inch or 80 millimeter. This is the four inch or uh, whatchamacallit, 120 millimeter fan. And I use them to cool my tank. It's very inexpensive to cool your tank that way because you're using low voltage power just to blow on the water. And it is my go-to method. It's been my, I live here in Texas. Texas gets very, very hot. And the common decision is to buy a chiller. And I have never bought a chiller. A matter of fact, I got a chiller as one of my tanks and I returned it. <laughs> or I, I sold it to someone else because I didn't need it. I don't like chillers because number one, you can hear them. Number two, they pump heat into the room as they cool your tank. And I don't need that type of situation. I don't need my room warmer. I want the room to be comfortable that I'm in. Many years ago, I uh, had a 280 gallon reef instead of the 400. In the, basically the same spot with a smaller room behind it. And I put a window unit in there to keep the room nice and cool. And that window unit cost me like a hundred bucks. I think it was probably 6,000 BTUs, uh, maybe an 8,000. And it kept the room comfortable around 72, 73 degrees and kept my tank around 78, 79 degrees. Well, when I went with a bigger reef tank, I thought I need to get a bigger uh, window unit AC. And that was my plan when I built this room back in 2010, 2011. But then, I ended up getting a roll around air conditioner, which is the kind you can roll into a room and you run a pipe out the window and it pushes the hot air out. And again, keeping the room cooler was my goal. But I found I didn't really need it. My house, uh, I keep the ambient temperature in here around 72 degrees, maybe 73. And my tank runs between 77 and 79 in the summer, 78 to 80, maybe 80 and a half. Um, and, uh, Adding a cooling fan like the ice cap that I mentioned, let the it kind of keeps it from rising even higher. In my situation, in my case, I have metal halide lighting, and that puts off a lot of heat. And a lot of you are using LEDs, and so that's not even an issue for you. Matter of fact, with LEDs, typically uh, tank owners that have those lights over their tank don't have the heat, but instead what they have is the tank gets too cold at night and have to run heaters all night to bring the temperature up because their tank isn't getting warm enough in the daytime to maintain the temperature at night. So there's always a trade-off. If you use LEDs, then you, uh, you have to heat the tank. If you use metal halides, you got to cool the tank. Uh, that's just normal. That's how this reef is or this hobby is. So, okay. One person just mentioned T5s. I definitely don't want to leave out other lighting fixtures. T5s are awesome, but they put out a lot of heat. <clears throat> and you need to have them at least seven inches off the water. So if you have them closer than that, you know, like if the light fixture has little tiny feet and it brings the, you know, here's the surface and here are the bulbs. Number one, you're heating the water like crazy. Number two, salt can get on those bulbs and you have to keep wiping them off to keep them clean to get the salt spray off and avoid it getting into the sockets, which could arc and create a small fire. <laughs> you don't want that. So I would recommend that you avoid that. Um, get them up off the water a little bit. Uh, what you can do is you can put a cooling fan that blows across the surface of the water to blow the heat away. Many years ago, I put fans on the back of my canopy blowing forward, and I thought that would solve it. But I had a very strange effect occur with my tank in that the heat that was coming out of the back of, you know, again, I was using metal halides. The heat was pouring down, the fans were behind, and they were blowing toward the living room, which I thought would constantly bring fresh air in, push the hot air out, right? That was my goal. Instead, what was happening was the heat that was in the canopy was getting basically behind the fans and blowing the hot air in a circle. It didn't really blow it out like I thought, so that didn't work for me. So I instead put the fans blowing straight down toward the water, which actually makes the water ripple a little bit and cools the tank better by having, instead of moving the heat away, I cooled the water by blowing down on the water. So that leads to this. This is a fan tray. I make these for people's sumps and you put your fans in there. You can put two in this one. You can have a bracket with three if you wanted. You can have one with just one. 
and you set the fan in there and it blows straight down. If you are um, <clears throat> not sure which way the fan blows, plug it in and put your hand in there and see if you feel the air. If it's blowing upward, flip the fan over and st set it in there. I'll show you. I mean, you know what this looks like, but I'll just do it because why not? My 400 gallon reef has one of these fans on it and that's all it needs. But I'm kind of tempted to add a second one just for fun. So here's the fan. Uh, the fan itself is four inches in diameter. The frame is four and three quarters. And I'm going to set it in my tray. So there you go, you've got your fan in the tray. And I, I make it with these notches on the end so that it sits on the sump. Let me see if I can demonstrate this. It sits on the sump and it can't slide back to forth. It, if it was, if you're looking at a sump side to side, it would be like this and it would sit within the rim and you could slide it left to right, but you couldn't bump it in and drop it into the water. That would be a risk, uh, obviously, of destroying your fan. And I'll tell you this, uh, Ice Cap has always had a really good fan. And many years ago, I had one of these fans fall into my reef tank because I had it standing on the edge. And it was just balanced on the edge of the rim like this. And of course, I bumped it with my elbow and toppled it into the water. And of course, it tripped the breaker and stopped the electricity instantaneously. So I didn't die. But um, my fan got soaking wet. So I took it out. I dried it off. I let it sit for two days. And then I plugged it in. It kept working. I was really impressed. So... I stuck with ice cap. Now, I don't know if you can still do that these days or if they've changed the way they make and they, they don't handle falling into water that well, but they're really good fans for a reef tank because they're designed for salty, moist environments. And uh, that's why I recommend them. That's why I sell them on my site. Power cord. Uh, there's a power supply, you know, just a regular wall wart. And then it has this thing right here. This is called a thermistor. And what it does is it senses the ambient temperature. So if the temperature of your uh, canopy area is really warm, the fan will run faster. And then as the uh, temperature cools off, it runs slower. Mine is hooked up to my apex. And I have it designed to turn on at 79.5 degrees. So my tank can be lower, you know, 78, 79, 79.1, no fan. It hits 79.5 the fan turns on and will keep blowing until the tank temperature gets back down to 79.4. Once it does that, the fan is shut off. So basically the fans are not running at night at all. They're coming on as needed and then they shut off again. And like I said, very inexpensive solution to cooling a tank. Um, if you don't have an Apex, which is a controller for your aquarium and you want to run fans, there's another method that works really good, and I used to do it on my old 55-gallon aquarium. I had my fan sitting on top of the sump blowing down, like I said, and I plugged it into a mechanical timer. Now, this one, you have to do a little bit of homework. You have to basically determine when you need the fan to come on and when you need it to turn off. So let's just talk about summer, because we're heading into the summer months. My tank would get warmer in the afternoon, and it would stay pretty warm all evening, and then finally, you know, late at night, it would cool off. So I, just, I determined that if I turn my fan on around 1 o'clock in the afternoon and let it run all the way until about, boy, I think it was like 2 in the morning. <laughs> that was the period that I needed the fan to run. And then from 2 a.m. all the way to 11 a.m. it was off. And that worked really well. In the winter, when the house was cooler, uh, humidity was different, I could run it from about 3 in the afternoon to 9 at night, and that was all I needed. So I actually just set the timer to click on and click off on the perfect window of when I needed the fan to blow. I always, you know, if you're just using any fan, like a fan you find at Walmart and you want to use that over your sump, you definitely can. Uh, you just need to plug it into some kind of a timer to dial in that perfect period that you need it to run. And it would be, um, you want to make sure it's secure, that it can't fall into the sump and fall into the water. What I did with that one fan I got from Walmart years ago, it was one of those big black ones with a foot underneath. I turned it on its face <clears throat> and set it down on top of a big piece of egg crate. An egg crate is just a lighting diffuser, so it just was this grid I set on top of the sump. Put the fan on there and I zip tied it to the egg crate so there's no way I could knock it into the sump. 
Julio is asking how many ice cap fans you would need for a 100 gallon tank. Uh, okay, let's, I'll answer that in just one second. If your tank has glass tops on it, uh, some people, you know, you buy an aquarium that comes with a lid. If you leave the lid on top of your tank, it'll run warmer than if you don't have it uh, covered. And my reef tanks are always wide open. Matter of fact, very few people that run a reef keep a lid on it. And some, I think the only reason people had lids originally was just to set the light on. But most of our lights hang from cables or they have feet that elevate them or they have a bracket that clamp, you know, clamps on the back and hangs over the top. So it's wide open. If your tank is covered, and uh, Julio <clears throat> lives in Brazil, if, um, if that tank is covered, the fans really aren't going to do much except blow the heat away from the aquarium somewhat. But you need it to be open to allow evaporation, to allow the heat to emanate from the tank, and to allow the cool air to hit it. If you have an air conditioner system in your room, you could point it toward the tank. Or if you have ceiling vents, make sure that one points toward the tank somewhat. But that only works while the AC is running. And when the AC turns off, it's not cooling your tank anymore. If you were running a chiller in the same room as a tank, like I mentioned earlier, you're making the room hotter, which in turn is going to try to warm up the tank while you're cooling the tank itself. And that is a, uh, it's kind of a backwards method to me. I have considered buying a big, huge chiller for my aquarium uh, many years ago as emergency uh, insurance, basically tie it in, plumb it in, and only turn on in the worst case scenario. But every chiller manufacturer I've spoken with says that doesn't work. Chillers have to run. If it just sits there stagnant for nine months or 18 months or three years, and then one day you need it, it probably will not operate and do your job. So I would suggest that you, if you're gonna use a chiller, use a chiller. Uh, if you can vent the heat coming off the chiller out of the room, that would be great. Uh, Julio, back to your question about the 100 gallon tank. I bet two fans would do just fine pointing down onto the surface of the water or pointing down on the water in the sump, like over the return zone. That's my favorite place to put them. If you, um, and I would use the 120 millimeter fans if you can fit them. If you can't, you can use the smaller fan. These are the 80 millimeter fans and uh, you could use two or three of them. If you need it to run faster, if you need it to run on the highest speed, which will be noisier, you need to put the thermistor on something that gets warm so that way it senses heat and makes it run in the high speed. My fan is always on low speed. I, I don't want to hear it. Matter of fact, I was just talking about this on Facebook yesterday. I spent the last two years making my tank very quiet. I have a quiet skimmer. I have a dead silent return pump. My vortex are all quiet drive, drive drivers. So I don't hear anything. The only thing I hear is the water at the surface babbling and going through the teeth into the overflow box. I don't hear the overflow. I don't hear it pouring into the sump. I hear the babbling through the teeth and it's bugging me. And I think it's so funny because I used to complain, oh, I hear the skimmer. Oh, I hear the fans on the dart pumps. You know, I, I, oh, I hear the hum of something else. And I've reduced so much of it now that the water seems loud to me. And, uh, you know, we're always trying to improve our tanks and make them better and better and better. All right, I hope that answered. Um, yeah, your question about the tank. Producer Reef asked if I'm still using the NIO skimmer. I absolutely am. I just did a review yesterday about the somatic skimmer. So you have, if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, it's a 12 minute video. It's a skimmer that um, I've been running on the frag system for three months and I really like it. So check out that review. Uh, it replaced the NIOS that was in that system, but I'm using the uh, NIOS 300 on my 400 gallon reef. Absolutely. Uh, what else can we talk about cooling? So I talked about air conditioners, I talked about chillers, and I talked about cooling fans. Those are really your three methods of cooling a tank and not putting lids on top. Uh, again, if you do need to have a cover because your fish jump, then most people use netting. Um, it's called bird netting or fish netting. Uh, it's a type of uh, nylon plastic grid that you put in a frame and you set on top of the tank. But it's, I haven't put one on my tank. And uh, occasionally I have had a fish jump. Really rare. I mean, if I was losing fish left and right, I would definitely do it too. But it's so rare that I lose a fish that I just don't. I keep everything open where I can just reach in if I want to, even though I try my best to never put my hand in the tank. Um, I'd like to mention that uh, 
If you're not following me on Instagram, you definitely should. Instagram.com slash Milo's Reef is where I share all kinds of reef related pictures and videos. And I recently, just yesterday, uploaded a video about my tongue coral that has super inflated and moved over on top of a giant chalice and covered half of it. So you can watch that video when we're done with the stream. Uh, I actually have to get my arm wet today. I was just, my brain goes to the next topic. And here we are talking about, I don't put a cover on the tank so I can reach in, but I don't want to reach in. And then I realize I need to reach in and move that coral because it's covering a chalice. Interestingly, they're not killing each other. It's just standing on top of the other guy. So that's no good. Okay, um, I do want to talk about the window unit air conditioner because I think it's a great system for cooling your reef tank, especially if you have a, a fish room to enclose your aquarium. If you do that like I do, you have a small room behind it or you built it into a closet or you've got it under the staircase. If you can cool that room alone, your tank will be stable. It'll be awesome because window units have a thermostat to kick them on and off. And if you think it's going to use a lot of power, I did measurements years ago when I had one on my fish room. And basically the compressor on the window unit would run 12 hours a day and it would be off for 12 hours a day. And when the compressor wasn't on, the fan was still blowing. So the air was moving through the room, keeping the room the ambient temperature, but it wasn't like chilling the room nonstop 24 hours a day. And like I said, you know, I was able to get a window, window unit for about $100, maybe $129. It wasn't bad, but they don't last long. It seemed like I'd have to buy a new one about every other year. And that's because the salt creep in the air was actually eroding the coils, you know, the, the actual uh, fins that the air blows through, and it would just destroy them. And you'd have to replace the unit. It just had to be tossed out. If you could avoid that somehow, more power to you. I never found a way. Even a split system, there's still a coil involved. But it let me have a room that I was comfortable in, so I didn't walk in there, and the room was 100 degrees while the tank was 78. I wanted the room to be comfortable so I could go in there and tinker, so I could grow phytoplankton or brine shrimp or, or rotifers or frag something or clean a pump or clean the skimmer or whatever I was doing, I wanted to be comfortable in that room. And there was a couple of times when we had a power outage and my entire house was off, but I ran a generator to keep that room running, to keep the aquarium going. And I'd keep the air conditioner running in there with me. And I'd go in there with my laptop and I'd be on the internet talking to people while I was in this nice cool room in the center of my very hot house <laughs> while they were fixing the main system. So, uh, craziness, but you know, we do what we can do. Okay. Um, Haeckel asks about an exhaust ceiling fan or a, or a fan to blow. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> an exhaust fan or a vent to pull the hot air away from the aquarium or even to vent the room is smart. And my last two fish rooms have a ceiling fan in there, <laughs> have a vent fan in there. Um, it's the same kind of vent fan that would be in a bathroom normally. The vent fan sucks out the hot air that's trapped at the ceiling and gets it out of the, out of the room or out of the house. And I got the quietest one I could find at Home Depot. Years ago, the one I bought was called Brown, B-R-O-A-N. And at Home Depot, they had an entire wall of these fans. You could push the button and hear what each vent sounded like. And I picked the quietest one I'd get my hands on. Um, because I just need to move the hot air out. I don't care how fast it moves it out. I wasn't trying to vent the room. I was trying to draw the heat out. And my vent fan has a tube on the fan itself. You know, so it's a box mounted in the ceiling and there's a hole on the side inside the ceiling. I put a tube on there and I ran the tube up to what I call whirly birds. These things spin on the roof and they help pull the hot air out. So when you stand behind my house in the backyard and you look at the two whirly birds, one is spinning like this all the time and the other one may be spinning or it may be stationary. It's because this one is constantly being hit by the hot air being blown out of the tank, or out of the fish room. And because I can't hear that fan because it's so quiet, I just go out outside and look up at the roof and if it's spinning, I know the fan still works. And if it's not spinning, I need to find out if the tube fell out of its position, which has happened occasionally, or if the fan has finally failed. But um, since building the fish room, I had to replace the fan one time. So basically I had to buy it twice since 2011. Uh, not bad, and it keeps the room nice and comfortable. Uh, in, the dead of now, <clears throat> in the dead of winter, you do not want to pull the heat out of your room. So if it was really cold in your environment, you know, let's say you're below 32 degrees uh, for weeks on end, I would turn off the vent fan at night and just vent during the daytime and then leave it off at night so your tank doesn't get so cold because if your tank cools off, what do you have to do? You have to heat it. 
So we want to vent just enough for what's right for your situation and dial it in to get that perfect situation. Now, um, on a canopy or if you were to put fans in the stand itself, there's always been the debate, should you have the fan blow air into the stand or should you have the fan blow air out of the stand? And let's say and or canopy. And I've always said blow air in. And the reason for that is when you blow air out, you're basically trying to vacuum the hot air out of the stand. And that air, again, salty, moist, it, it clogs up the fan. It, it can affect it. But your room is nice and cool. The air inside the stand is, let's call it humid and toasty and warm. If you could have the fan blowing in room air that feels nice and comfortable, it will force the moist hot air out of the stand through whatever holes it can find. Whether it's under the cabinet door, out the holes in the back of the stand, out the holes of the canopy. If your stand is completely sealed, then you definitely want to put some vent holes to let air get out because you're trying to vent it. So always blow air in. If you can blow air down onto the water, that's your best bet. But if you don't have that option for whatever reason, too much gear, no space, uh, fear of water and electricity, then blow air in or blow air in or blow air in you know, from the canopy. But always blow in rather than trying to uh, suck it out. All right. Uh, can't answer you about air exchangers because I've never run one. Let's see. Um, someone said it also racks up your electricity bill. Well, if we're talking about air conditioners, yeah, it's going to cost some money. And like I said, I did some math on it a while back, and it was costing me about $35 a month to run a window unit. So roughly about a dollar a day to keep my room comfortable for me all summer long. And, you know, Texas, our summer is kind of like five, six months long. <laughs> we get about three beautiful weeks out of the year when you could open the windows and doors and let air blow through. And even then... I don't do it. I, I use my same air. That's it. Whatever's in my house, that's all you get. If you come to visit me, you're going to breathe the air that I breathe, and nothing fresh gets in here. I don't allow it. <laughs> Let's see. What else can I answer for you guys? Um, you guys are chatting like crazy. Um, okay. Let me tell you another thing I did. And I'll answer your question, Lynn. She asked how much sunlight can I have going into my room? I have a little bit of sunlight coming in, but it doesn't hit the tank. It kind of more like shines light into the tank because it's bright, but as the sun rises, you know, it quickly, you know, the roof and everything gets in the way and it doesn't happen. But direct sunlight on reef tanks, we usually tend to avoid. Okay, I want to tell you about the, the workaround I did for the, uh, the air conditioner because I put it in the wall of the fish room and the back side of the fish room was my garage. So you got one side blowing nice cold air in and the other side pumping all kinds of heat out of it and it was heating up my garage. Made my, you know, if the garage was 105 degrees just because it's summer, the air conditioner dumping all of its heat into the garage could put it at 120 degrees or even hotter in there. It was horrible. So initially I'd open the garage door this far just to let some air out and let some air in, you know, just to kind of reduce it, but it wasn't enough. And I was doing a lot of work in my garage because my, uh, makeshift workshop back then. So what I ended up doing was I took my favorite stuff at Home Depot, that pink foam. I use it for everything. The pink sheet, you know, okay, you know what I'm talking about? I got nothing. They sell these huge sheets of pink foam. They're three quarters of an inch thick. They're four foot by eight foot. They cut with a razor blade. I use it under all my sumps. And uh, I also like to use it to build prototypes of anything I'm going to build. Like when I was doing the woodwork around my 280 gallon, I made it all out of the pink foam first to stand back and look at it and see if I liked it before I committed to cutting any lumber. Well, I use that same pink foam to create, uh, yeah, sorry, I, everything is with my hands. Um, here's the box, here's the hot air blowing at me because it's coming off the backside of the air conditioner. And I made like a chute type chimney that went up to the attic and I cut a hole in the ceiling. So all the hot air blowing out the window unit went straight up into my attic and then it vented out the attic and my workshop didn't get hot anymore. So. And I did that for a long time. So if any of you guys are AC guys and you're like, oh my God, that's a terrible thing to do. I totally disagree. It didn't create back pressure. didn't make it use more power because heat rises naturally. So it's blowing out the back and it's rising. And all I did was just direct it into my attic through a huge two foot hole up there where it's already hot as hell and let that hot air go, you know, 
out the whirly birds or out the soft vents. Worked great. And I didn't have that uh, situation with uh, the heat warming up my workshop anymore, which was great. Now, the outside of an air conditioner unit in the past would drip water nonstop on the ground. And the last couple of units that I'd bought didn't drip. Instead, the water would amass in a tray inside the unit, and the fan that's spinning, that moves the air through the unit, would uh, throw that water onto the compressor to evaporate it. So it never dripped water on the floor, which I thought was very interesting because I totally expected it. I had made an acrylic tray. I'd put a bulkhead in there. I ran a tube down to a bucket because I thought I'd be catching condensation. Nothing ever came out. And I was like, wow, okay, that was unexpected. So, you know, if you're buying a window unit and you're wanting to predict all the things that can happen, you definitely want to know if there's going to be condensation, where that water is going to go. Is it going to affect what's on the other side of the wall? Oh, uh, yes, the uh, pink foam is great stuff compared to the white. The white just breaks, you know, it's all those little, like, pills all glued together. The pink foam is a solid sheet. Uh, Lowe sells a blue version of it. Um, the pink one from Home Depot is Pink Panther, and it's great stuff. I use, like I said, I use it for a lot of things. All right. Aerocraft said for me to say your name in this video, so I just said it. He also has a number in the end. I think it's the last four of his Social Security number, so I'm not going to say that. Let's see. Okay, uh, producer Reef asked about the portable AC. I actually have one of those, and it was in my fish room. I ran a pipe through the wall, or you know, the the, the vent pipe through the wall, and on the other side of the wall, I built a chimney going straight up to my attic, just like I did with the other system. I pumped the hot air straight up, and that way I don't pump the hot air into my workshop now. And but I found I didn't need it, so instead I took it into the workshop, and pump that pipe into the other side of that chimney so my workshop stays nice and cool. My house AC keeps the tank the right temperature with the uh, one ice cap fan, so I haven't needed to do it. it. The good side about portables, you can get it out of your way for the winter. You can just put it away, and then you have to bring it back out for four or five months, you know, for the summer months, uh, so it's kind of in your way again. But uh, I've had, I had one last for two years, and I had to replace it with another one. And now it's in my workshop, and it's totally in my way. I kind of want to get some a split mount AC where you got the unit high up on the wall, and then you got this uh, compressor condenser thing on the outside, inside your house, and the, you run some kind of, I don't know, copper tubing to, the, to connect the two. I'd like to do that in the workshop. All right. Let's see. Um... Is it hard to set up the ice cap fan with the Apex? Not at all. I literally used if then commands and I said, if the tank is this temperature, turn on switch. And then I plugged the, the fan into that switch, that, that outlet. And then if temperature is this temp, you know, is less than this number, turn off. That's it. And so it turns on and off when it feels like it. Uh, I don't know this per how do I say this person's name? One and Cirque asked about drilling vent holes in the back of your stand for cooling purposes. You might need to. You might discover you need some openings on the back of your stand to let some air out, especially if you're going to put a hole on the side and blow air in. So you can actually drill a hole in the, set, in the side of your stand, maybe four inches in diameter, or if you want to use a smaller fan, three inches in diameter. And you can put the fan on the inside of the stand and screw it so you don't have to see it from the outside and even put a cover on there to make it look nice and make sure that the air is blowing in to the, the inside compartment of your stand. Uh, Rico's Reef wants to know my phosphate level. Well, it was 0.5 last weekend, so I'm going to assume it's still 0.5 right now because I haven't done anything this week but work. I have been building things out of acrylic left and right to uh, make my customers happy. So that's it. 0.2? That's it? lightweight. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, typically I'll dose phosphate or X and bring it down. I have been having this internal battle about should I do a water change or not, and I uh, have not uh, done one in months, and I'm kind of tempted to do one, but I have to make salt water, and I want to finish this other project. I want it out of my living room and up against the wall over there, and when it's assembled, hopefully by the end of this weekend, you'll see a picture of it on Instagram. What is on my shirt? 
There you go. I got this shirt at Comic-Con and it's a couple of divers fishing and there's, it was awesome. I liked it. So I had to get it. Let's see. Um, K3V asked me, how far do I ship stuff? I've never measured it on a map. I just sent some safety stop to a customer in South Africa and I sent some stuff to the UK. I've shipped to Australia before. Uh, it, shipping international is more uh, involved than shipping anything within the US, which is obviously my preference, because I have to do a custom slip. I have to go to the post office and stand in line and, uh, and get that package on its way to you. And uh, certain products I can't sell to other parts of the world. For example, if someone said, I want an Apex or I want a Vortec or um, uh, let's say a Nio skimmer, you have to get it from your country. Uh, those companies don't allow me to sell outside of the U.S. Plus, the electricity is different. Um, but other things like Revive or uh, two-part dosing solutions, those kind of things you could use. It's not a problem. Things I build out of acrylic, I can ship. Uh, again, it has to be packed really well. It costs a lot, but I, I do it. It happens. I shipped a sump to Germany once. That was pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, Brian, I was not at the uh, Cinco de Mayo thing. I believe I did a live stream, and then I think I kept working on stuff I had to build. <laughs> Let's see. If there's any more questions about cooling, I'd love to answer them for you guys while we're on this stream. I'm assuming that the sound and the, the lips line up still because we're going through my phone. And... What else do I have for you guys? I just had a couple of people visit me today. Uh, a couple of guys that have been members of my club forever. And we were talking about salty things. It was a lot of fun to just sit around and relax and catch up. Do you guys do that? Do you have people come over to your house and just chat about your tank and crawl up and look down from above and play with the pumps to speed up the flow just to impress them? Uh, hello there. Shashi? <laughs> I never want to botch your names. I worry about that kind of stuff. Okay, if you don't have any reefing friends, you guys need to look because there are people everywhere. Matter of fact, there's a guy up the street from me who is a brother of another guy all on the other side of town, which I call Egypt. And that guy has a reef tank, and then his brother over here has an aquarium, and I live right down the street, so sometimes he would visit his brother and come see me at the same time. You'd be surprised how small this world really is. Jetsia asks, what's the best temperature to have in a mixed reef and why? Okay, um, normally what we try to do is copy exactly what the ocean has, but you will always have people out there debating this stuff. Here's the thing. D the livestock dictates temperature. So for example, let's say you had a soft reef tank with seahorses. Most seahorses like cooler water, typically around 72 degrees. So if you were to put seahorses in a 79, 80 degree tank, it could, in essence, shorten their lifespan, which you don't want to kill your seahorses just because you're running the water too warm. So instead, you would run the tank cooler, but certain corals may not fare that well in the uh, cooler water. Soft corals, yes. Um, clams may not be happy in it. Anemones may not be happy in it. It's too low. So you have to pick the, the livestock for the temperature zone you're aiming for. Typical mixed reef, we like to kind of keep it around 77, 78, 79. That's, that's where I like to aim. But like I said, in the summer, my tank tends to run 78 to 80. Maybe even a little bit higher, like 80 and a half. Um, by the way, one more thing about controllers that are really nice and what I've, I've got programmed in mind, but very rarely happens because, like I said, my tank temperature really does stay where it needs to be. Um, I have it set up to if my tank gets too hot, it turns the lights off. And that way I just look at the tank and like, oh, my tank's too hot. <laughs> I mean, I have it set up to send me a text to warn me and send me an email, but visually speaking, if the lights turn off, I'm like, what's going on? That's weird. And it makes me even more aware of the situation. So I'll actually pull my phone out of my pocket or uh, check my email and see what's going on. 
But since I put the ice cap fan on there, that little tiny bit of air blowing down has been enough that the tank just doesn't get to creep up to that point, which on my tank is set for 82 degrees. If the tank gets to 82, shut off the metal halides. If the tank gets to 82.5, start turning off other stuff too. Anything to reduce heat going into the water. Now, if your tank is running hot just naturally, let's say you have your, your room at 72 degrees, but the tank is always like 83, 84 degrees, then you are either running a canister filter, you are putting glass tops on your aquarium, um, or you're using a really big pump that is putting a lot of heat in the water and you're choking it back because it's just too big a pump for the system, but you chose to use it, or your heater never turns off, a broken heater. So those are the ways the tank gets too hot. So if you can keep your room around 72, 73 degrees, your tank should really be around 78, 79 degrees. And if it's hotter than that, it's one of those other issues. Take the lids off the tank. Uh, get the right size return pump that doesn't add so much heat to the water. That could even be the pump on the skimmer you're running. It, um, those are things that add heat. Um, and then uh, the other things I mentioned too that have already went out of my head. Uh, producer Reef asked about an acrylic, acrylic tray. This is what I make to put the fans in. And you just set them in there. And you can put two of these fans in there. It fits in there nicely, like this. It sits right on top of the sump. Okay. Um, Matt... Matthias Castro says, or Matis, mate, yes. I don't know. You guys and your names. Can't you all just be John Smith? <laughs> he is saying that running a manifold would also help reduce heat. And he's right. Because if you have five pumps in the sump running five different pieces of gear, or you can have one pump in the sump that runs to five different water sources, like one pump that feeds multiple reactors and then a pump on your skimmer and then a return pump. That's only three pumps. If you have a skimmer with a pump and you have a biopellet reactor and you have a carbon reactor and you have a GFO reactor and you have a return pump, so you have five pumps in your sump. And let's say you wanted one more pump in the refugium, that's six to move water around. So you want to reduce it. Ah, oh, thank you very much. So Matthias is how to say Oh, maybe it's Matthias. <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. I didn't mean to butcher your name so harshly. Uh, Computer fans will work. Um, I just like the ice cap fans. That's why I recommend them. That's why I use them, and that's why I sell them, because I know they work really well. Plus, they have a warranty, and if something goes wrong, ice cap will replace it. You just contact CoralView and say, I need a replacement fan. You provide proof of purchase, which, you know, you get a receipt when you buy from me, and they give you a new one. Krishna, I can totally say that easier. Ah, oh, you're spelling it backwards. All right, fair enough. You got me. Smart. <laughs> All right, um, that's everything for cooling. Next Saturday, there will not be a live stream because I am actually doing a tank tour with my club and my tank is on the tour. So we're gonna visit five or six tanks that day and we're driving all over town. And uh, what I'll probably do is film each tank and then do a video, stick it up on YouTube for you guys to see. Tank tours are a blast and if you've never heard of one, what we do is we ask for people in our local area. And unfortunately, Texas is huge, so even Dallas-Fort Worth is a lot of driving. And uh, we go to each person's home, and we spend about 45 minutes there. The first 15 minutes, we talk about the... Uh, you know, they tell us about their system, and then we have about 15 minutes to ask questions, and then we kind of just enjoy it and mill about. And then we get in our cars, and we carpool as a group, and we drive to the next destination. And... Usually about 40 to 50 people will get on this tour and go see those special tanks. And, you know, between, you know, in the drive time, while you're in your car with your AC running, you can uh, eat and drink so you're not hungry, you know, you're not, like, missing out on a meal. Sometimes the people on the tour will have some treats in their house. They might have sodas available or uh, some Toll House cookies ready to go. Um, and we're going to be seeing my tank. Uh, we're going to see Ryan's tank, which is a 1,000-gallon reef. We're going to see Tammy's tank, which is 800-gallon reef. Uh, we're going to uh, see, I think, Carlos and Michael's tanks. I think that's the five. Maybe there's six. I, I didn't memorize the list. I just know I'm on it. 
and so I won't be able to do a stream next Saturday. But I will be rolling out some more uh, videos this week. I, like I said, I just got one out last night. I've got to get some out on the Hannah Checkers because I promised those forever ago and I got to get that completed. I've got some test kits that I've got to film. I've got the water pump station to finish building this weekend. Lots of things to do. And uh, so that's why I can't do that live feed on Saturday because of too much going on. Uh, Lynn, that's a great suggestion. And yeah, why not? That's a great topic. I like it. Cedric asks if I can suggest any heat resistant corals. Okay, first of all, what is 32 degrees? I need to know. Let me com convert. Celsius to Fahrenheit, 32, 89 degrees, 89 degrees, are you kidding me? Okay, I got nothing. Okay, let me tell you why 89 degrees or 32 Celsius is a problem. As soon as you cross 85 degrees in your tank, as soon as it's 85, 85.1, 85.6, whatever, oxygen levels plummet in an aquarium and it makes it really hard on the fish to breathe. Um, if you have a sand bed, the sand bed is sucking up the oxygen too. 85 is a terrible point to go to. Um, let me just put that in here really quick. 85. That's 29.4 Celsius. So, no. I can't think of anything you can put in, in 32 Celsius water or 89 degrees. It's too crazy hot. Uh, you can do some research. You might find something that can tolerate it. But that's really hot. The only workaround in having a tank that warm would be to have a air stone pumping in oxygen all the time. But I would definitely put a chiller on a tank that's running that hot. That's, why is it so hot? Is your house 89 degrees too? Is the tank matching the house? Is there no way to cool the room the tank is in? Is it in an office building? Oh, that's another whole big topic that still deals with chilling. Let's go into that for a moment. Found a way to fill five minutes. If you have an aquarium in your office where you work and all week long the office is open to the public and the AC is running, and the same thing goes for schools. Uh, if you're a teacher and you have a reef tank in the classroom, uh, they always turn off the AC on the weekend when no one's there. And so the tank temperature will rise exponentially based on how hot the place gets while it's closed. They may turn off the AC in the nights um, and they definitely turn it off on the weekends. So in that situation, you're very likely to have issues with your aquarium really struggling to survive because every weekend it's getting baked. That's not stability. Stability is keeping it 78, 79, seven days a week, nights and days. So if you are in a room that you cannot control the temperature of that room all the time, you're going to need to find a solution, which could very well be owning a chiller and having that chiller running. And it'll run all weekend long while the room is 90 degrees. Uh, Lynn, you're not asking a dumb question, and I do have a sump article on my website. Um, it, I think it's called, What is a Sump? And you can just go to mealsreef.com and type in, what is a sump in the search box, and it'll take you right to it. And it talks about all the different gear you can put in there. Uh, but basically, yeah, no, I think that's a great live stream topic, and I'll definitely do that in the near future. There you go. So here's a dentist, for example, and he has a saltwater aquarium at the clinic. Um, there was a doctor that I visited in Austin, and they had a big, huge waiting room with a giant 500-gallon reef tank in it. Beautiful. But again, he had to make sure that the climate control stayed on in that room even on weekends when the place was closed. So you want to make sure you're planning ahead for that. All right, guys. Um, let me take two more questions, and we'll wrap this up because i got to go build some stuff. I guess I could drink my coffee. Wow, I can't even imagine a tank running at 89 degrees on purpose. Matthias asked about running, uh, using the laser. Uh, what I talked about in the video pretty much is what I recommend to do the laser. And I've got another laser video coming out. That's another thing I have to do this week. I've got to do another, I got another laser. So I got to do that one for you guys. 
Um, well, Dustin asks, is there a good controller for the fans? The simplest is a mechanical timer where you literally set it for the, how long you need to run it. Um, different brands of controllers, if they have an if-then statement, basically, is what you want. I use the Apex. If you can, uh, if you can't get the Apex, find out what controllers exist. You know, what you're looking at. See if you can do it. Because you're going to base it on temperature. You want the plug to turn on when the tank is a certain temperature. You want the plug to turn off when it's a certain temperature. Okay, uh, someone said, what lasers? Check my YouTube channel. Just go to the search box on the channel and type in laser. And there's two videos right now. And I got another one that's even bigger than the last one. And it kind of looks like a lightsaber. Uh, Brian, I might do a live stream of me building something out of acrylic. <laughs> and yeah, it would be a long stream. I, I found in the past when I tried to film that, the lighting didn't really cooperate. It was like, you know, I mean, I saw perfectly, but the camera was like a big bright white spot and you couldn't really see what I was doing. Um, but yeah, I'll see what I can do. Uh, one of the reasons I don't really share the absolute how to work with acrylic is because that's how I get paid. That's how I make a living. And while I provide a ton of information on my website of how to work with acrylic and I show you the tools you can use and, and the techniques I use, I don't really want to give away the entire thing because I, I, I want to still be able to eat and pay my rent and keep a roof over my head. And so I don't quite give away everything. That being said, about once a year, I have people come here and I do a demonstration in my workshop for club members to attend. So I do show it. But just giving it to the entire world of YouTube, I mean, I guarantee you there's other videos out there that already share it. So, I mean, if you really got to know, you'll find it out there. But I, uh, I don't know. I want to keep eating. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, I share a lot of pictures on Instagram, um, a lot of technique. So check that out, too. Yeah, I'm doing my best to keep all my fingers. Matter of fact... I worked with a table saw for, well, you know, forever because I did it. I used to work woodworking too. And I never lost any fingers. I'm so happy about that. And uh, it's, I've been very lucky that way. Someone just said, yeah, you could use a heater controller for the fan if it'll do the right range. Um, I think it would. Matter of fact, Cobalt had something called a Neostat, and I think it's discontinued but it was able to handle up to 100 watts. I don't know if it works well with super low wattage, like, you know, what do these fans pull? Like, three watts or something? It doesn't even say. It says the CFM, and it says the, the voltage, but it doesn't say the watts. But, um, yeah, some kind of, uh, the Ranko controller is what people used. Um, if you are getting a chiller, you might see if you can buy a chiller that also has a heater built in. That's another nice method. So that way in the, because water has to move. Okay. <clears throat> another thing I didn't mention about chillers. Sorry. I don't, I'm not a chiller guy. I just know about chillers. A chiller has to have a pump that feeds water into the chiller and then pumps it back into the tank. And so that's another pump you have to put in your system. And that pump must run 24 hours a day forever. If for some reason that pump doesn't move water, if the chiller's on, none of the cool water is going to get into your tank because water's not flowing through the chiller. Typically, the gallons per hour to go through a chiller is 500 gallons an hour. But always check the manufacturer's recommendation so you get the right rate. If, if you put 1,000 gallons an hour through a chiller that's rated for 500, you're not going to get the efficiency uh, or even the results that chiller promises. When the chiller fails, when it breaks, when it clogs up, when it leaks Freon, whenever something happens that you are relying on to take care of your tank, your tank will get warm while you're getting the chiller repaired or even replaced. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you're going to run a chiller, are you going to keep another one on hand or are you going to keep money on hand to buy another chiller in an emergency because you got to have it now because your tank needs to be kept cool that way. Um, so I really like the cooling fans. I mean, I really do. And if you can get away with these fans, I mean, this fan right here is 46 bucks. I make the tray for like $35 or $39, um, you know, a couple of fans, you know, for like $120, bucks, basically, 
you can cool your tank. Now, yes, I know you can go to Fry's Electronics and buy yourself a $7 fan and you can, you know, rig it to your stand somehow with a couple of screws and spend seven bucks and be happy. I do it a little bit nicer. You know, I want you to have something quality, something that'll last you a very long time. And I'm trying to recommend you use a fan that'll last a long time too. So it'll cost you some money. I never said this hobby was cheap. Uh, matter of fact, I kind of recommend you to spend money on good quality gear that'll last you a long time. That's how I feel about everything I buy. And I kind of want that to rub off on you. <laughs> a fan will definitely increase water evaporation, but water evaporation is how you cool a tank. That's 100% normal. My reef evaporates about 3.6 gallons of water a day. Now, what I did not do, I haven't measured that in forever. I really should have measured it in the winter and then measured it again in the summer. And I totally forgot. Um, another thing that will help cool a tank is removing a, a humidity from the room. So if you, wow, there is a lot to this topic. If you run a dehumidifier, it will take the moisture out of the room and the room will feel cooler to you. And of course it'll feel cooler to the tank as well. Downside of a dehumidifier, it adds heat to the room. <laughs> Everything is a trade-off, every single thing. So I do run a dehumidifier and in the winter, I have to empty it about every five days. In the summer, I have to empty it twice a day. Uh, you could rig it to run to a drain where it just you don't have to empty anything out because it's always draining, but I don't. I empty the machine. And when it's full, it just turns itself off until you empty it. Does evaporation get the bad stuff out of the tank? No. All it does is evaporate water, uh, literally water, not even salt water. It's evaporating water. The salt stays in the tank. That's why we replace whatever's evaporated with fresh RODI water every single day, even multiple times a day. I use what's called an auto top-off device, and it's hooked up to a, a container filled with RODI water. And as the evaporation occurs in the sump and the water goes down lower and lower, and the same would work in a display tank. If you don't have a sump, as the water evaporates, it goes lower inside the display tank. This device would top off the water and bring it back up and keep it there. So if you don't have an automated method to top off your tank, get one. It will be the best thing you ever bought because it makes your life so much simpler. If you're new to the hobby or you're, you spend all your money and you got nothing left for a top-off device, because you know, usually they cost about a hundred bucks or so, you need to top off the tank manually. And it's really easy to say, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll, you know, I'll do it and you just don't for like two or three days and then the water's down this far in your aquarium and you finally pour it in. When the water's this far in your aquarium, your salinity has risen. It's more and more salty. It's getting become, it's becoming more condensed. And so you add in all this fresh water, which dilutes it again, but that's really hard on the livestock when you think about salinity rising and falling. So general rule, if you do not have an automated method, every time you feed the tank, top it off. And God, I hope you feed your tank at least once a day. Uh, all right. Um, Cheetah asks the question, any advice for newbies? I actually have an article on my website for newbies. And right on the front page of my site, there's a link. It says, newbies, click here. Click that. MilosReef.com, click that. And it'll take you to all my articles. And then scroll down. I, unfortunately, I don't have the newbie article at the top of the page. I need to do that. I need to move it to the top or, or pin it or change the date when it was published. But scroll down a little bit, and you'll see, I want to start a saltwater tank, and click that. It is filled with so many different articles and videos all in the succession that you should bookmark that page and then work your way down it slowly. It's actually in the correct order and work your way through each segment, um, starting the tank, cycling the tank, uh, testing the water, water quality, and then clean, adding a cleanup crew. It's all in the correct order. Read all that, watch all those videos that are embedded in that article. And there's probably more videos on my channel that really belong in that article. I need to update it. Maybe that'll be how I bubble it up to the top again. But that's designed to help you guys, especially when you're brand new to the hobby. All right. Um, also on Facebook, if you're trying to follow me there, it's facebook.com slash Milo's Reef. And I also share really cool stories there. The coolest story I came across this week is an article about a bridge that they were tearing down. And I feel it was in the New Jersey, New York area. And they're completely tearing down this ancient bridge and taking sections of it and putting it out as an artificial reef in the ocean, they're gonna use it. And then the other parts they're gonna recycle and use it elsewhere. So none, it, it's not just going to the landfill, basically, it's being used 
to encourage or to grow a new reef out there. And I thought that was really neat. You'll find that article on facebook.com slash Milo's Reef and then scroll down through the posts. Be sure you uh, like that page. Uh, it's a great page to follow. I try to put all kinds of cool things on there. Um, I shared some some interesting creatures there too uh, a couple days ago. So you don't want to miss out on that. All right, guys, we've been at it almost an hour. I'm going to end this. Thank you so much for listening and following in and talking with me in the chat. And uh, next weekend, no live stream. Hopefully the one after that, I'll be right back on schedule. Bye, guys.